and make a piece of a Woody Woodoon there. Oh, well then, Mac, uh, what I'm doing right now is uh, I'm trying to come up with a new kind of pizza recipe. So I thought I came up with an original idea for a new kind of pizza. I'm gonna call it a fruit of pizza. Oh, so it's a one example with a basket of fruit. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. You know, I was wondering, you know, this bright idea I had about making a fruit of pizza because I got the uh, got pears, I got the apples here, I got an apple, I got a banana, I got bunches of grapes out here, you know. And I think, oh, why? Doesn't that sound like a really good idea to make a fruit of pizza? You know, I thought I had the original idea until I decided to get out of my little phone thing and I Googled it just to see. And guess what? It's a not original idea. There's a dozen recipes out there for a fruit of pizza. Can you believe it? I thought I had a brand new idea. But you know what the Bible is saying? There's nothing new under the sun, including a fruit of pizza. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, what are you going to try? What recipe am I going to try? I'll tell you what. I got it written down right to here. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to see, give us one of the most easiest recipes at first. I think I've got all of the fruit that we need to do to make this a pizza. So here's what I want you to do, Mac. I want you to go down into the kitchen there and take a little here of fruit, okay? And I want you to slice it up just like you would a pepperoni. And we're going to get started on our fruit of pizza. Okay, you ready to, get, ready to go do it now? Okay, boss. I'm going to do the pizza. The fruit of pizza does sound pretty good. Yeah, you get down there and you make it, that'll put you, you cut it up a really good. <laughs> uh, fruit of pizza sounded really good. <laughs> hey, did somebody say something about fruit? Oh, <laughs> hello, little Polly. Yeah, yeah, so Mac and me, we're going to try this a new a recipe for a pizza called a fruit of pizza. And, uh, you know, I got all different kind of fruits, though. I'm just not really sure which one I'm really going to use because, you know, all the fruit, it all kind of tastes a little different. You know what I mean? Yeah, like the fruit is different. Each one is different. Well, you know, you got a good point there. Just like the fruit of the spirit. Each one is a kind of a different. Hey, you know what? You just gave me a really good idea for a topic to teach the kids tonight. Hey, are you kids who want to know what the fruits of the spirit are? Shout it in if you would. I, I can't hear you. What? Jeremiah Wolfrog, I'm uh, uh, sorry we woke you up. Well, I may as well stay with now. So, what were you all talking about anyway? Uh, and yeah, uh, we're talking about uh, learning about what the food of the Spirit is. Yeah, we're going to learn about what the, uh, the food of the Spirit is, what we're talking about. Oh, well, I already know. Well, yeah, you're ready to read the Bible. Well, I'll tell you what, being that you know it already, uh, would you mind reading the scriptures for us tonight, then, maybe? I do. Alrighty then. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, to find out what the fruit of the Spirit is, I think we need to go to the, the New Testament. Uh, we're going to go to a Galatians, the chapter of 5, a verse of 22 and a 23. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 says. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, weakness, temperance, against such, there is no law. Well, that's alright. Uh, yeah, hey, Peter, you think maybe you could break it all down for us and explain what it means? Uh, break it down and explain what it Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, let's start with uh, the first of first. The uh, first of fruit, what they call a love. Now, are you kids, do you know what a love is? No. Well, I'll tell you what a love is. Uh, not. Uh, 
love is not an emotion. It is a decision. Now, emotions can come from that decision. But actually, the kind of love we're talking about here, talking about God's unconditional love. Remember what it say in John 3, 16. Tell him. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. That's a scripture all of you kids should know, you know. Now, the next one, the, the fruit of joy. Now, what a lot of means, the kids. It means of being a happy, a no matter what a state that you're in, and not a letting the words of this world to depress you. Now, the fruit of peace, well, by a definition, this is what that means. It means freedom from any strife, freedom of the mind from annoyances and distractions. But, you know, sometimes I don't have peace. Does that mean I don't have the spirit? Sometimes you don't have a peace and you feel like you don't have... No, I'll answer that in just a little bit, but then let's move on right now to the next of food, uh, long suffering. Does that mean we should suffer for a long time? That one doesn't sound very appealing to me. No, it doesn't mean a suffering for a long time. No, that's not what it means. No, what it means is... Um, it's a long and patient endurance of injury or trouble. That means you, you get through stuff. You trust the God, you see. Now the next of fruit is the fruit of gentleness, which is a fruit every Christian or should it be a producer. Now what that basically means is a being lenient, being a merciful. It's an absence of a bad temper or belligerence. Oh boy. And I do lose my temper. I think I may be in trouble. Uh, don't worry, we all lose our temper some time. Now, I'll take, I'll answer some more of these questions for you a little bit. Now, the fruit of goodness, though, it's another virtue that every Christian should be showing. Now, what that, that means, it means uh, we're being moral, being obedient, and uh, being a kind to each other. Well, that one is a little easier to do. Yes, it is. Now, the fruit of faith, which is something we shall all walk in. Amen? Amen! Now, remember now, we walk by a faith and not by sight. And without a faith, it is an impossible but to please a God. I think I walk in faith, but I'm beginning to wonder if I'm... If I ever not. Look at Polly, I don't worry about it, okay? Now, the fruit of meekness, uh, by definition, is simply a means of being a gentle and a being a kind. Now, the fruit of the spirit of a temperance is a one a lot of us sometimes I have a little bit of a trouble with. Now, what a temperance means, it means moderation, and self-control. Now sometimes oh, we do overdo things a little sometimes when we shouldn't, uh, like uh, like uh, eating too much, or uh, maybe uh, working too much, or talking too much, or talking too much, that's all right. Sometimes you do that too. Proverbs 11.30 That's a really good scripture of Proverbs 11.30 The fruit of the righteous is the tree of life and he that with us souls is wise And you know that's something else that we're supposed to do Jesus even told us that we should be witnessing to people Because that's a fool, see? Hey, you know, I got one too. Okay. It is in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us walk 
offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, give it thanks to his name. Oh well, yeah, so you know, that is another good of fruit of the Spirit. Now, you know, when we are praising God with our mouths, and they give a thanks to him, and oh, that's a kind of what it means. means. Okay. Okay. It shows that we're producing a bad of fruit. Ugh, I hate spoiled fruit. Tastes really bad. Yeah, that's all right. You know, and if we produce a bad of fruit, it's a bad taste in the God's mouth for two. Now, would you like to know uh, what Jesus said about a bad of fruit, kids? Amen. Shout, can you shout amen? amen. Okay, now here's what I'm going to tell you. Uh, Jeremiah, if you would have pleased, now this is kind of long. It's in uh, what Jesus is say, because if you have a red letter of Bible, at least it's going to be in a red letter. That means that Jesus is the one that's speaking. It's in the book of John, chapter 15, verses 2 through 8. Go ahead, Jeremiah. John, chapter 15, verses 2 through 8. And he that there is not food, he takes away, and every branch just going to church at one time a week. It means of living a Christian life a 24-7. Now, if you don't do that, and you bear no fruit, you know what? That scripture just said, you are in danger of being a cast into the fire. And that a fire is a hell. Yeah, I want to be bad food. But you know the Sometimes one. I think I do. Now I'm getting more worried I might not really even be born again. What am I going to do, Pizza? Okay, now, Polly, uh, don't worry about this. Did you know that the fact that you are even a concerned if you were born again, it proves that you are born again. Huh? Well, if you're not a born again, you wouldn't even care if you were or not anyway. Like that's a big relief. I thought he might like that. <laughs> you know, just like God's people produce good food, Roman people produce bad food. That's right. Uh, God's people produce a good fruit. 
All worldly people are produce a bad fruit. It's like it is say in a Matthew chapter 7, verses of 15 to 20. <laughs> Just a kidding, you a man. I'm not gonna make you one of those. <laughs> no, I'm not a serious. I don't think so. But I will make you a fruit of pizza. But at first, uh, we gotta go back to the market to get some fresh fruit because you know who ate it and all. Of it. Anyway, next time I come here, I'll bring some of you uh, samples of the fruit of pizza and we'll see how it goes. And, I don't know, maybe I will make you a bug of pizza. At least it's something I can get him to make it he might not eat anyway. Well anyway, until the next time, remember now you need to be producing some good fruit or God is going to cut you off. Good night everybody. <laughs> <laughs> 